today I'm going to give you guys a little peek into my mind. A peek into the mind of a freelance filmmaker. Freelance filmmaking or photography or any freelancing for that matter can be quite a bit of a roller coaster ride. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips to deal with that uncertainty in your career. So I've become a little bit of a audiophile lately. Not really that much, but um, I'm focusing a lot more on audio. Uh, me and my friend Pedro just started a podcast, which you guys should check out. I'll have a link in the description to that channel. We're going to be filming stuff every week, talking about filmmaking and photography. So as a podcast, that's some of it's going to be you know only audio on like Spotify and Google Podcasts and stuff like that. It's got to be good audio, you know, so I've been really thinking about that. Not that I didn't think about it before, but I'm thinking about it even more. And so I'm trying this setup. It's obviously not the best setup for a video, but I guarantee you that the sound in this video is going to be a lot better than the other one. So anyway, just trying to make it easier on your ears. So tip number one has to do with the understanding that things are going to be going up and down your whole career in this in freelancing that is. When you have a lot of work, it seems to kind of come all at once. You might have a week or even a month where you're just overwhelmed with the amount of work and you can barely keep up. And in those times, it can just feel like it's too much and you don't know how you're gonna be able to get all of these things edited in time or pack in all these shoots in one day. A good thing for me in those situations is to remember that at some point in the near future, I'm not gonna be that busy. In fact, I might be really needing some work. And so that idea helps kind of get me through those heavy times, knowing that, you know, this is just going to last a short spurt and I should really just get the work while I can and pack it in and work, you know, work your ass off for a couple of weeks, knowing that in a few weeks I might have a week where I only have one or two shoots or who knows, I might have a week or sometimes two weeks where I don't have any shoots. And during those times you get a little bit of a breath and like you can relax a little bit, you know, loosen up and you know you made it through that hard stretch. So when you're in the hard stretch, you just need to know that it's coming up pretty soon. You're not going to have it. So, you know, be grateful for you when you have it and just work your hardest and know that you'll get a break coming up soon. So there's a Taoist teaching that I really love. I think I read it in the I Ching at some point. I don't know, I could be messing this up. But anyway, it basically goes that when you're feeling really good in life and things are going really well and you're super happy to prepare yourself for when you're going to come back down and you're going to have challenges and life's going to be difficult and maybe you're not going to be that happy. And if you prepare yourself for it and you expect it, then it won't be as hard to deal with when it happens, but it's going to happen and it's inevitable. Change is inevitable basically is what it's saying. And then vice versa when you're all the way in the very bottom and you're just having a hard time to prepare yourself for your ride back up the roller coaster and to understand that you're going to be heading back up shortly and you're going to be all good. And this basically just brings you to a place of full trust in the process and knowing that things are going to work out in the long run, thinking of the big picture and also expecting those highs and lows to happen. All right, tip two. So knowing that there's going to be some low times and some slow times in your career, these are really great times for developing your business and developing your skills and your creativity. So during this time, I like to still keep work hours. And this is a really important change I made last year that has enabled me to grow my business significantly. And that is I set work hours for myself every week and even if I don't have a shoot, a paid shoot or anything to edit, I still go to work. You know, I pretend like I'm kind of clocking in for the day and I don't get off work until that whatever that hours I set up for myself. You know, you're your own boss. You can set whatever hours you want, but you go to work and you do other things. So for me, that's maybe making more YouTube videos for you. If you don't have a YouTube channel, maybe you should start one. It's a fun project and it can grow into another kind of side hustle. Another thing I do is I shoot footage for stock sites. So I upload a lot of stock videos to Black Box Global, which is a site that uploads your videos to all the different stock sites for you. 
and you can collaborate with other people to do all the metadata for you. It's really a really great uh, platform that I use a lot. So those low times, I can set up fun shoots with models or actors or just friends and beef up my stock footage collection online. Another thing you should always be doing, and these are really good times for it, is updating your website. Make sure you have recent content on there. Make sure you have the best content on there. Make a bunch of content for social media. I do a lot of stuff on Instagram too. So during those times, I might take a whole day where I'll just make content for Instagram and I'll be able to release it throughout the next week or two. Create promotional material for your business, whether this be hiring yourself and making a promotional video of what you can offer people and posting it online or maybe it's making some flyers and posting it on some Facebook groups. But basically doing all that work that you don't have time to do when you're shooting and editing a bunch, and you can take that time to actually grow your business, become more professional, and get more clients. And another great thing to do is online courses. Never stop learning, always flex that creative muscle, and always be striving to be better at your craft. By the way, I have a free course right now I'm giving away in exchange for you just leaving a review on Skillshare and I'll put the link in the description. It's on how to become a freelance photographer, filmmaker, and travel the world. So take that course for free and just please leave me a review. That would really help me out. And please, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, do that, please. Tip number three is budgeting. So this has uh, been a learning process for me, um, learning how to budget your money, knowing that there's going to be down times and up times. And it's easy when you're, you know, hustling, you got a bunch of jobs, the cash is coming in steady. And it's easy to just go out and buy all the latest new gear, you know, get some new camera, get a new gimbal, I don't know, whatever you want, new Mavic 3 drone. Uh, buy all those things because all of a sudden you have the money, but then you get all those things and a week later you don't have work and you're broke and you don't know what to do. So budgeting is super important. It's going to be different for everybody depending on where you live, how you live, the gear you already have, what kind of things you buy in general. I live in Costa Rica. There's really nothing to buy here anyway. So I, my only thing is gear and I basically want to spend all my money on gear. And that's a good thing to do sometimes because, you know, gear for a filmmaker or a photographer is investing into your business. And if you're able to actually create way better content or make your job way easier, you should definitely upgrade your gear. But just make sure you do it when you know for sure you have that extra money buffer for you know potentially in a couple weeks that you don't have work for a week or maybe two weeks just budget that in knowing that that might be the case coming up so it's always good to have a little bit extra saved out maybe for a couple weeks to cover you all right tip number four is to never stop promoting yourself now this one you may not even think about that much in the very beginning you might just think, oh, I can just put out a, a reel every year and people are just going to be hitting me up or, you know, put a sign on a door and people are just going to come. But that's not really the way it works in freelancing. And like I said before, sometimes you just don't have clients or enough of them. So even when you're busy, you want to keep promoting yourself. And this is something I even have to remind myself all the time. If I'm super slammed and busy, I don't think I can take on any more clients, but you can always, of course, schedule them out, you know, a couple weeks or for next month, you know, maybe there's a wedding or something, you know, you want to keep scheduling that stuff out, giving yourself enough time to prepare and knowing that you might, you know, have a few months ahead that, you know, your budgeting is already covered or your clients are already covered for that month. So always keep promoting. And for me, that's, you know, like I said, hiring yourself to make prom little short promotional videos to post every once in a while. I use Facebook groups specifically to my location a lot. Um, I do a lot of social media posts about different projects I'm doing. So as I'm doing a shoot, I'm taking a few clips out of that posting on Instagram, reminding people what I do and the quality of my work. And remember, even if you have too much work to do, that's a good thing. You can always scale your business, hire other people, hire an editor on Fiverr, maybe get an intern in your area, somebody younger out of uh, film school, if you have any film schools around, 
that wants to learn and can help you out with your business. So these are actually the times that you can actually stretch your business and scale and you know maybe get out of your comfort zone but that's the only way you can really grow your business so tip number five to me is probably the most important tip might sound a little woo woo but whatever it works and that is to make sure you have the right mindset in this business or just in life in general and for me that mindset is attained through meditation that's my practice whatever it is for you Maybe you're religious, maybe it's praying, maybe you like yoga, whatever it is. Maybe you work with a therapist, I don't know. But something where you can take some time away and set some intentions for your day, for your week, for your month, and understand that things are going to work out. And to not have fear of scarcity in your life, to not be guided by fear, to not let stress take over because stressing and worrying is like praying for things that you don't want to happen and you know be careful what you wish for because if you think negative all the time things might not work out for you and i've found in fact just recently i was in that period where i didn't have a lot of work and i was feeling a little worried i meditated on it and literally later that day three different sources of income came in. I got new clients. Things just kind of started to come together and it always seems to do that for me when I finally let go and just trust in the process. So maybe that's taking time to doing some writing. Um, I like writing down what I'm grateful for in the morning or just meditating on it. Um, just grounding yourself out. Maybe you need to go for a walk or a run. Maybe exercise is your way of dealing with stress or anxiety and just find that thing for yourself and just make sure you understand that things are always going to be going up and down and that things are going to work out in the long run for you so that's it for today i hope you guys got some value out of this and if you haven't already please subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video